Good morning, everyone here. Any any more missing? Left behind. Tercice. Under the bus. How many still not around? Okay. Whenever you're absent, you need to email me. We need to have it in return. That's the record for ISO. Just a short email. And then if you got proof to prove it, then prove it. Right. Okay. <clears throat> do, do, do you have a test today? No? No. So what do you have today? Activity. What activity? No, no, no. Other than this class. No? Still not wake, waking up. Take a breath. Do you have other things today going on? What is that? Okay. All right. So no test. All right. Okay. Right, okay, let's continue. So, um, today we're going to learn about water, specifically. I know it's very universal, but the water that you need to understand now is the water in action. You see, water got properties, and since you are learning about plant physiology, this water pretty much plays very important roles in various um, processes in plants, okay? <clears throat> so before we go deeper, I would like to attract your attention to one thing. You see, when you learn science, you need to understand that science comes with lots of um, variables, symbols, parameters, okay? Please, if you can, this is good for you so that you are not confused by, by it. Please understand that most of scientific notations, symbols, they are in the form of ancient Greek letter. Okay, it's pretty much like our now Roman alphabets A, B, C until Z, but the shapes are different because they are pretty much ancient, okay? I'm sure that you have heard some of the letters here, like alpha, beta, gamma, and so on, but there are many more, okay? So pay attention to the lowercase and also the uppercase, how it is written. So for water potential, where is it? Is it this lane? This, this lane? This lane? This lane? No. So why? This. Yeah. So look at the size. So this is the universal symbol. When I say universal, even if you go to Norway, people use this symbol. Okay? So this is the capital case, huruf besar, lower case for huruf kecil. Okay? Sometimes it is written like this as well. Okay? So we know we, it, that is still sign. Right. So why this is important? First, to, to show you that there is a form of standardization for every concept in science. And also to prevent miscommunication among scientists throughout the world. Okay, so whatever that you have learned here during your degree time, if you get the chance, you go abroad, you go mingle with people globally, people are using the same notation as well. All right. For example, look at pi. Remember pi? What is pi? So it's, 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 it's like a constant, right? It's, it's, it's associated with a number. 
and so on. Thus, phi number n, the decimal of the pi point. Does it end? No, it's, it's infinity. It will never end. Okay? So regardless of anywhere you go, this is, this is how it is presented. So what about other letters? Other letters are not only used in physiology, but it's also used in medical community, in engineering community, and so on. All right? Even in physics. Physics like to use this a lot. Right? Okay. Uh, what about mathematics? Sigma. Sigma is a notation for summation. All right? Okay. So please do not be... Oh, I, I, this is new concept to me. No, no. Please open your horizon, open your head as widely as possible. You are going to be bombarded with information from heavens. Right? Literally. Okay? The, the, I'm, I'm telling you this, you know, some, some people, or actually most people, they are very confined in terms of the things that they, they let to absorb in their heads. They're just being resistant about it. Tak boleh terima, tak boleh terima informasi baru. It just, I just want to understand things the way I have understood all this one. You do that in this time, in this era, you are not going to be very, very happy very soon. Right. Okay. Talking about water. So water, you know, H, 2, O. It's got properties, okay? The common properties that you learn from school probably that it is called as universal solvent, okay? Pretty much many, many things can be dissolved in water. So water got properties, and these properties are actually make what makes water unique, right? Make it suitable for specific event make it suitable to be used in specific process like the solvent, universal solvent. If we, if you think about it, it is not, not too much. When scientists call water is the essence of life, look at your body. It's over 70% water, right? It's, if you think about it, you are actually a walking jug of water with some electricity going on. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right. Anybody got no water in the body? All right. Okay. So these are the four. Um, I'm not going to go to, into too much detail. I'm just going to highlight the properties that are important regarding plant science, or plant physiology for that matter. Okay. So, these properties include the hydrogen bonding in water, making it is not easy to break water apart, and then the high capacity, thermal conductivity, cohesion, surface tension, latent heat, these two are latent heat, addition, polarity, and also the solvent. Bear in mind, this is not an exhaustive list. Exhaustive means this is not the end of it. There are many more properties of water and many more are being discovered with current research. Okay? So, if you, if you think further in other discipline, water might not um, have the common view as you are having now. Let's say that water in the view of economist and water versus in the view of a chemist. Do they see water in the same way? Why is it different? It's the same thing. It's still water. So the chemist is going to look at the water pretty much like this, you know, all the molecules and stuff. How do economists view it? Sometimes water can be regarded as commodity, you know. It can be traded. It can be exchanged. It, it is needed for the livelihood of the people. And also sometimes water is, um, is an resources, you know, one of the many resources. Sometimes it is not renewable in some places, okay? You might be wondering, is, it, is, it, is that right? Water is not renewable. Is it renewable or not? 
I would say, you know, this used to be in one of the question asked when I was in an interview with, with students, is water renewable source or not? I think the safe answer to say is yes, but not fast enough. Water is renewable, but it's not fast enough, meaning that it has to undergo the cycle from one form to another. But given that our population is booming now and everybody is very demanding, the presence of the water to come back to square one is just not rapid enough to fulfill the, the current demand. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so look at this um, little table here. So you can see that now there are new terms, normal water, subcritical water, or supercritical water. What is that? So this is the point I'm, I'm trying to highlight you. Water and its own already got properties. When something else is a, um, acting upon it, it can has new properties. Simply like that. So what are the things that can act onto water? All of these things, like temperature you know, or environmental conditions, and also the things that get dissolved in the water itself. And also the location of the water. The water that you are having here is not the same as the water in Camera Highland. It's different. Okay? Different what? Is it not H2O? It is the H2O in other properties and regards. <clears throat> okay. H2O. So, bear in mind this as your fundamental information. Water, one of the reasons why it is a good solvent is because it has got this condition called partial negative and positive charge. This symbol here means partial charge. Okay, so the arrangement of water molecule is actually, even though it is H2O, it is not like this. This is what you, you see in your school lab. Straight, it is not linear. Okay, and it is not in the form of L. It is in, the, in this form. There is a specific angle to it. Okay, I think about 100, 100 something degree. So this makes um, water being able to attract to each other easily and also to other molecules. Okay, it has what we call as electronegativity. Okay, so like it says here, electrons are pulled towards oxygen okay so this is the positive charge so when water molecule is interacting with other molecules that also has charge molecules that have a negative charge will be attracted to this side of water because positive and negative they are attracting positive and positive what happens is it attracting or is it? It's going to repulsing. It repulses each other. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so that, does, does this change? Pretty much this thing, this lake here, I would like to call it a lake, it's pretty much fixed, but it has some amount of flexibility. Okay? You, it, it can open and wide but it has the tendency to keep this conformation. So why, 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 why this is important? Yeah. <clears throat> About the bonds in water. Remember people keep saying that it is not easy to split water molecule? So there are two um, important bonds. Revise back your chemistry, okay? In water or among water molecules, there are the covalent bonds and also the hydrogen bonds. You can see that <coughs> hydrogen bonds, it involves hydrogen. Okay? Hydrogen. Remember, what is the charge of hydrogen? 
positive or negative? Positive. So it's called the partial charge of positive. This will be attracted to the neighboring water molecule, which has got the partial charge of negative or positive? Negative. Okay. So this is hydrogen bond. All right. What about the covalent bond? It's for the non-similar atom or element, okay? Like in the case of hydrogen and oxygen here. So this is the polar covalent bond. Why is it called polar? Because this one is negative, this one is positive. That's why it's called polar. Like our Earth. Our Earth has got polar, right? North Pole and South Pole. That is the reason, okay? So... If you think about it, in order to break water, therefore, some amount of energy is needed. And by the look of it, it seems like lots of energy. You need to break two kinds of bonds here, the hydrogen bond and the covalent bond. This is easy to break. How about to break this? Yeah. So the fact that it is not easy to break the bonds in water, especially the covalent bond, it makes water stable and versatile in, 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 in some regards to have various of these properties. Okay, so look at the table here. <clears throat> so what is meant by that? So remember all the bonds that you, you saw earlier? You see there are many bonds in chemistry. This is just to, to recall back a few from your chemistry years. Did you like your chemistry in school? Enjoy your chemistry? Okay. So, um, th these bonds in chemistry has what we call as the bond energies, right? In the form of kilojoule per mole. Meaning that these two bonds, in order to break it, some amount of energy is needed. And these are the, the amount of energy, okay? You can see that starting with the ion ionic bonds, covalent, dipole, and also the hydrogen bonds, okay? So, <clears throat> so look at this, table two. Average bond uh, of um, energies of the common bonds. This is single bond, double bond, triple bond, okay? You can see that the, the, the more... Tight, tighter the bonds is, it's got the double and triple, the higher is the bond energy needed, All right? Okay. So, hydrogen bond, look at the energy, only 10 to 40. This is why I said earlier, it is easy to break. But what about the other bond in water molecules? Covalent? Covalent bond. 200 to 500 kilojoule. That is like many, many times more. And that is only for one molecule. For a glass of water, how many water molecules are there? So it's not easy to do that. Okay? Which is why sea temperature is very stable, okay? You, 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 can, you can rely on that to the point sea has its own life. Whatever that we have now, this is called terrestrial life. Hidupan daratan, okay? You, you, you have your animals roaming about, your zoo animals, you have your plants, rainforest, you have humans, you, you have insects and so on. All are terrestrial. But we know our planet is not entirely land. It is actually mostly water, sea, ocean. And there is a vast amount of life under the sea. And why this is possible? One requirement to have life that the ambience, the atmosphere, it needs to be stable. 
why water temperature is stable this is the reason okay so can you live underwater why not assume that you got gills can you live underwater maybe this group can become a mermaid and that group become a merman right what what do you think about mer mermaid and merman do they, do you think they exist have you seen any mermaid and merman no. i i got i got a student ask me because that was the first time in the class they they know that the the male version of that uh, uh, mer mermaid is merman did you know this before so you got mermaid and merman. What about in between? Because fish is, sometimes is hermaphrodite. What do you call that kind? Yeah. I don't think they got a word for that. Yeah. It's because in, in human, like, like in Malay word, you got, um, uh, what's the word? Saudara, saudari. And the third one can become saudarai. <laughs> It's, it's in between. So what about the mermaid and merman? What is the, the in between word? Maybe you can, you can create one. <laughs> right. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we're going to look at the three important properties. I know you saw 10 properties of water earlier, but we're going to look at the three, three or four because this is important for the plants. Okay. Specific heat, number one. The amount of heat required to raise the temperature. Temperature of what? Temperature of any substance, in this case water, by 1 degree Celsius. Okay? So, <clears throat> you can see here, there are many liquids, water, ethanol, and so on. Who's the highest? Yeah, yeah. So remember the bonds in water earlier? So it is not easy to increase the temperature of water. You can see here, water, water and ethanol, which one is more flammable? Ethanol. But why does it take more to heat up water? See, that is the magic properties. Water is not flammable, but ethanol is. However, to increase the temperature of water, more energy is needed. And still, it is not flammable. Okay? So, what is meant by this is, 4.18 is the amount of energy needed to increase the temperature of it by 1 degree Celsius. Okay? So, half of the energy is needed for the ethanol. If you look at the book, some books use Joule. This is Joule. Some books use calorie. I give the conversion here. 4.18, maybe you cannot see it. <coughs> 4.18 Joule equals to 1 calorie. Do you know calorie? Do you know calorie? Do you have calorie? Where? Fat. Only fat? All over the body. Actually true. All over the body. Yeah. Okay. So um, you can see that this is the temperature at specific heat. Um, what is needed to increase the temperature of one gram of material. Okay. You can see that um, for, for example, water here. It's, um, I want to, put, to relate this to plant actually. You know, if, if it's very easy to, to increase the temperature in, for, in water, what will happen to the plant? Meaning that from 20 degree, it becomes 21 degree in just a small amount of energy. What will happen to the plant? Okay, it becomes heated easily. 
then what will eventually happen to the plant? Can it function well? Why it cannot function well? Imagine in the plant, instead of having water, it's called ethanol. And then you put the plant under the sun to photosynthesize. What will happen to the plant? It'll burst into flames. Yeah, because the water is not stable. Nothing can, can happen. Right? Okay. So that's bringing to the point of transpiration. There's a slight mistake here, okay? You can correct this. It's two. Transpiration is um, equivalent to your sweating. Okay? So since water can store up so much energy, and remember, heat equals energy. The moment transpiration takes place, a large amount of heat is taken away from the plant system. Okay, so this will bring the cooling effect to the plant. Exactly like you're sweating. What happens when you are sweating? You will have water droplets on your skin, right? Yeah. Then the wind comes. What will happen to the water droplets? It will? It will what? It will shh. What's that? It will evaporate. After it has evaporated and left your skin, what happened to your skin? It feels cooler. Okay? One, one droplet won't do much, but try the whole uh, body. Okay? Every single pore of your skin can sweat. Okay? And since skin is your largest organ, that's why sweating is very effective in cooling down your body. Right? Remember that, okay? Um, skin is organ, okay? And it is the largest. Why is it the largest? Why? Why skin is the largest organ? Yes, it has got the higher surface area. Because it's, it's not thick. It's just a thin and it's spread out all over your body, right? Yeah, like in this case here, 50 to 300 of transpired H2O molecule per absorbed CO2 molecule. So when the stomata open during photosynthesis, water will move out and this will regulate the temperature in the plant, even though your plant's sitting right under the sun. Look at the plants. Do they have umbrella? Are they wearing sunscreen? But you, when you touch your plant, do you, you, do you feel burning heating? Why is it not hot? It has been under the sun whole day. They got water inside of them and they also make water to lift to even further cooling down this, the, the entire system. Okay? So that's, that's how clever the nature is um, in ensuring this. Okay. So... Another concept is, just now is specific heat, meaning that the amount of energy needed to increase 1 degree Celsius of 1 gram of substance. Another one is now is the latent heat. <clears throat> have, you, have you heard this before? So what is latent heat? <clears throat> We're talking about the phase of matter phase of matter and since water is also a substance a matter it has got phases what are the phases of matter solid it start it start with solid okay it start with solid and then if you give more energy to the substance, what happened to the solid? It changed to what? It changed to liquid. You give more energy to the liquid, it becomes what? You give more energy to it, it becomes what? 
solid more energy becomes liquid liquid more energy becomes gas gas more energy becomes what plasma plasma it's ion ion ionizing matter you know plasma not plasma in your blood that's a different compound plasma when gas is being given lots of energy more than it can handle it is the ionizing state of the matter okay the good example of plasma is thund thunderbolt thunder you see the thunder that's that's actually a plasma i think in the past people kind of sell this magic ball thing like the plasma when you touch it the plasma kind of you know following your fingers have you seen that thing yeah plasma ball okay so the latent heat is actually um the um the heat required to change the state of water from one phase to the next so you know all of these phases in water solid liquid gas and plasma to change from one state to another for example like from the solid to the liquid this energy is called the latent heat meaning that you have your water here when you give the energy to the water in the form of this is ice cube because this is solid the temperature of the ice cube is going to increase. Maybe the ice cube started off as minus 20 degree. You give more energy to it, what will happen to the minus 20 degree ice cube? It will become more what now? More positive or more negative? So it will become more positive, it becomes minus 10. It will become minus five. It will become zero. It will become one. Okay. Around here. You see here? In this region, solid. In this region, liquid. And this is the, what I call as the twilight zone. So to change from the solid to liquid, this is the latent heat needed. Latent heat. Why is it called latent? Latent means dormant. It is, it is not, it is static. Okay. What is static? Yeah, that is the question. What is static? The temperature. So the ice cube, from the ice cube, to become a liquid, when you give further energy, suddenly the temperature is not increasing. It just won't increase. It keeps on absorbing. It keeps on absorbing until a critical limit. The moment it has changed itself to a liquid, then only will it increase back. So this dormant period here, you see nothing happening is flat that is called the latent heat because this is the change from um, solid to liquid that specific phase we call it as latent heat of fusion this one here okay latent heat of fusion meaning that this is needed to change um, solid water to liquid water and then the same as well to, to change from gas, solid, to gas. But now the name is what? Latent heat of vaporization. Did you learn your science in Malay or English? I know in Malay they got words for this, but I do not know. Huh? Do you know what is it called Malay? Latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of fusion? Huh? Anybody know? I do not know. I should know, right? Huh? <laughs> 
because I I learned I learned my my science in school like over twenty years ago. Let me see. <sighs> my brain, my brain, my brain. Mm. Oh, not not sure which one is which. Is it for this or this? Haber, pendam, pelakuran. But I'm not sure which one is it. Is it for this one or for this one? And then change this word for either you want to talk about solid to liquid or liquid to gas. Latently, it's called haber pendam. Okay, look at the word haber pendam. It it's latent. It, it just keep it to itself, right? Okay. So why is it important? All these um, uh, properties. So. Can you imagine if um, the water, the water implant is in what phase in the plant body? Solid, liquid, gas, or ion? Right, <coughs> in the plant body, water in what phase? What water implant in ion phase? Liquid liquid if it's very easy to change from liquid to gas what will happen to the plant uh, why drying you are dealing with water your plant will turn into steamed kangkong right think about it if it's very easy, I mean like you have your plant, you let your plant under the sun the whole day and because it's very easy to change the state of water from liquid to gas under 10 minutes, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to find a cooking pot. Your kanko will, will be steamed in no time. Because, because the steam is cooking the plant right okay so that is the wisdom in 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 our nature and the, and the things around you and that's why water is special and that's why I keep calling it is the essence of life so all of these properties of water make life possible imagine if the water can easily change this thing this latent heat of vaporization is very easy to happen what will happen to water in you You go and stay under the sun. What will happen to you? If just now kangkong becomes steam kangkong, what will happen to you? Dehydrated. De dehydrated. Why de dehydrated? Let's say that the steam the steam cannot um, leave your body because you got steam. Then what will happen to you? What's your name? What? Pija. <laughs> Buja. Okay. What will happen to you if if the heat of vaporization is easy to uh, obtain, and suddenly all your liquid water turn into steam, but you cannot live because you got skin. Your skin is impermeable to water, right? What will happen to you? Cooking from inside. Cooking from inside. Okay. Then what will happen? It is it's gas now. You know what will happen to you? You will turn into bujang hot water, hot balloon service. You got steam, then you will float and you will travel. And then you can carry a lot of your friends with you. You will turn into a hot balloon. It's your steam. Your steam, you are light. You can float. Science, you need you need to think a bit different, okay? If you want to be good in science, never ever think linearly. It doesn't matter if you you like to stay in the kitchen, you like to stay as a workman. Don't think linearly. You think linearly, you're not going to go very far, All right? Okay. And finally, I think there should be the the the, the other one. Uh, no, the second last. Um. Surface tension of water, okay? 
So water has got a surface tension. Actually, everything got a surface tension. So what is surface tension? Ketegangan permukaan. So how 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 do you define it? Um, you see this thing, this this equipment here. You see. Um, what is meant by surface tension is is the ability oh no 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 is the amount of en energy or force needed to create a spreading film before it breaks so you have you have your water here Let, let's say that you have like, like a block of water here and then you want to spread it out. To spread it out and make it thinner, as thin as possible, energy force is needed, right? Yeah. yeah. So that energy needed to spread the water for one meter before it breaks, that is the surface tension. So this is why the unit of it is Newton per meter. Meaning that what is the amount of Newton, Newton is force, needed to spread the substance for one meter. Think about it. If you are dealing with more viscous substance, it's going to take more force to do it. You have your water, you have your dodol. Which one is going to have more surface tension? Water or dodol? Why? Because it's viscous. You need more force to spread it. Right. Okay. So this ability of water to create the surface tension um, enable it to do various things. For example, some insects can walk on water, like the water strider. I don't know what water strider in Malay. You know water strider? No. Have you taken your entomology? Yeah. Uh, water strider. Um, and then leaf can float on the water and so on. Okay. And also, you got this phenomenon like dew. Droplets can form on the leaf surface. If water hasn't got surface tension, this water droplets will not form. It will form like a film. It will not form like a sphere this way. Okay, it will spread out across the the leaf. Okay, so why this is important? Um, it's a phenomenon, but it has got um, application in like the, fo the formation of fertilizer, the formation of herbicide. And so on. So this concept is very important because the more we understand that water got surface tension, we can play around with the surface tension of the water to improve water permeability into a system. Yeah, I give you an example. Uh, you know that some um, plants like orchids, orchids you don't fertilize using MPK granule fertilizer. No, we use what? Spray, spray, foliar spray. So this foliar spray actually has been added with a compound to decrease surface tension. So that the moment the foliar fertilizer is sprayed onto the leaf of the orchid, it is not clumped in one location, but it will be spread evenly throughout the body of the orchid. So when this happens, the orchid has more chance of having the nutrient of the folia to be absorbed into the body rather than in just one place. What if, if the one place do not have stomata? Right, but now it has spread it on the bigger area. Some area got stomata and also maybe cuticle crack. The nutrient of the folia can get into the body of the orchid, right? Okay. <clears throat> right, and Finally, I think this is the final one. Um, the cohesion and addition.
properties of water. I think you have seen this one before, right? Daya lekatan, daya lekitan. I'm not sure one is for which, which one is lekat, which one is lekit. So what's the difference between cohesion and addition? Cohesion is the sticking of what? Similar molecules. So addition is the sticking of different molecules. Think of this way. Cohesion, cooperate. It is easier to cooperate with your friends, with the people that you know. Yeah? But it you need additional effort, additional resources to stick with somebody that you do not know. You just remember that way, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So this cohesion and addition enables water to travel very far in the capillary of the plant. Very, very far. What, what is the tallest plant in the planet? What is it? Anybody know? If you, if you know, you don't have to come to uh, final. So the tallest plant is about, I think a few years ago, it was 180 meters. I, I'm sure it's, it's more now. It's been a few years. So it's, it's about 120, let's say. It's about 120 meters. So from 120 meters, it's even taller than this building. Okay, because one floor is about three meters. So it's about 30 plus over stories of building. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's, very, that's very, very tall. So the water from floor zero all the way until floor 40, water can travel with that lift, with that pump. How does it do it? This is why. This is why. So that, that, that is another one of many brilliant design of nature. Even though with that pump, even though with that lift, the water can travel from the ground all the way to the tip of the tallest tree in the world, Redwood, California, in case you want to know. I, uh, what's the name? Sequoia? Sequoia Sempervirens, I think. Without the help of any electricity. Okay? Can you climb from ground floor to floor 40 without any equipment? Just climb. Why not? Not enough stamina or you're just too heavy? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Alright, okay. So appreciate that, okay. So the, the capillary action is very, is very, very important uh, for the plant growth, okay. Now comes the story of water potential. Who, whose experiment you have done already? So what is it actually? <clears throat> So water potential is the concept of free energy. I mean, like the, the word potential means the ability to do work. This, I have mentioned about this already, right? Okay. So the ability to do what work to, for the water to move from one system to the next system. Okay. Provided that the barrier in between the two system is permeable to the water in the first place. Okay, <clears throat> so the simple definition of um, water potential, water potential, psi, psi W equals to psi P plus psi S. Psi P is the water potential for the pressure and also water potential for the solute, right? So it says here, um, Water will move from higher water potential to low water potential. What is meant by higher and low? So water potential always zero. 
for the pure water. However, when you are dealing with water potential in plants, that is already negative. Okay, root, for example, the water potential for it may be um, minus. No, I just make it minus ten, minus ten megapascal for the um, shoot. The water potential may be minus 20 megapascal. So water will move from where now? From the root to shoot or to the shoot to root? Root to shoot or shoot to root? Why? So it moves from the high. In this case it is less negative to this which is more negative both is negative okay so this is one driving force that enable water to go up from the root to the shoot okay yeah so look look let's look at the component of this um, oh by the way I put this, I just put it um, uh, yesterday because it says here, this is a potential energy. This is just to remind you of the things that you have learned before. So there are two types of energy, okay? The kinetic energy and also the potential energy. Since um, water potential falls under the potential energy, so what is it exactly, okay? So energy types, if it's the kinetic energy, these are the energy that enables... Um, uh, processes to happen, you know, like you, you know, motion, uh, radiant energy, and, and so on. And then you got the potential energy. Potential energy is is something something. It's in the system itself. The system is able to do something because of the situation. For example, like this gravity, the apples. The apple, when you allow it to fall, it will go down or up? Wow. Why? So it has got the potential to drop right. Is there something come to the apple, give it energy so that it can go down? Because to go down, that, 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 that needs to have some kind of ability, right? From one place to another. But does something come to the apple the night before? Okay, now I bestow you with the energy to fall so that you can go from the top of the tree to the bottom of the ground. Something came to the apple last night? This is something already in the apple due to the positioning of the apple. Okay, because the apple is on the higher ground. Okay. So due to the gravitational pull and everything, it falls down. It has got the potential. So this is the same thing as um, uh, water potential. Due to the sit situation of the water system, meaning that the system contains more water molecules, suddenly it has got the potential to do work, to move to the higher, to the lower concentration. Before this, Maybe it doesn't have that, that, that ability, but situation change. Situation change, suddenly it has the potential, all right? So this is not something like kinetic energy. Look at your battery, you know, your triple A battery, double A battery. Situation change or not, after you have used it, can you use it again tomorrow? You say, oh, situation, situation has changed. Yesterday, 10 of April. Today is 11. Today, I'm, I am happier. Please function. Will your battery work? But the situation has changed. You are happier now. It won't because this is another form of energy. Kinetic energy. Okay? So that's, that's, that's uh, sorry, chemical energy. 
for the case of the battery. Eh, sorry. Kenapa aku rasa uh, Raja ni masih terbalik? Hmm. One minute. You know what? Can you disregard this slide? I th I think science this science science oh it says science facts. I thought I was looking at science flash. Please disregard this this um 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 slide. I'll I'll find I'll find something some something something uh for for you later. This this is why don't trust anything that you get from the internet okay this this is why no I, I i know what if if something is not right because this is not my first time looking at this thing i learned about all this thing like 20 years ago so it's not my first time okay please disregard this but the concept of kinetic energy and potential energy that is correct okay i'll give something later this is correct this is correct <clears throat> okay um i mentioned last week that water potential got components in it right there are many components like the gravity components pressure components solid components other components but for the simplicity you only deal with these two solute and pressure okay and the units of pressure since this is dealing with pressure we deal we use the unit of pascal okay then why you keep on saying mega pascal well mega is just the prefix because there are so many zero you don't want to write all the zero then you just write m mega Mega means what? Ten to the power of six. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. Can you express water potential in other units? Yes, because pressure can be expressed in more than one unit, like length. What are units you can use to express length? Centimeter, kilometer, yard, yeah, so many, okay. However, some units are SI unit, meaning that internationally accepted as a standard. Some units are more, you know, traditional um, um, imperial in, in some region, okay. <clears throat> Just to give you perspective, in case, because I cannot control the material that you read, I, I, I've seen that some, some, um, um, References, they don't use megapascal, they use bar, okay? I think guys should know this because kau isi angin kan? Kau tak isi angin motong kau? Which one do you see at the petrol station? PSI. PSI. Is it so? Look at this. This thing, is it this? Mana jangan nak merepek. Ini pound per square inch. Nothing to do with water potential here. This is what we call as, this PSI is abbreviation. Kependekkan. Abbreviation. Pound per square inch, PSI, not the psi. Ini adalah Greek letter. Look at this. Huruf besar. Ini huruf kecil. So, um, don't don't make weird mistake, okay? So, I give you this table so that you can convert whatever you need, okay? From Pascal, how do you want to convert it to bar, to pound per square inch, from atmospheric and technical atmospheric. Usually we use this, we don't use this, we use this only. Right? Yeah. So, one Newton of force applied to an equal area, square meter, so 
Pascal itself is a unit, but it has got synonym to it to make things more complicated and unpleasant to you. This is the synonym of it. Newton over square meter. So whenever you see this, this is the synonym for Pascal. Alright? Okay. So should you use which one? Pascal, PSI, or atmosphere? Atmo, at atmosphere? Um, since the SI unit for pressure is Pascal, use Pascal. Alright? <clears throat> okay. So can you use one bar? I cannot say that you're wrong if you use bar, if you are familiar with bar, but it will make me very unhappy and have the tendency to deduct your mark for next question. <laughs> yeah, no, I need to convert things into my head if you use uh, all these um, non-SI units, okay? All right, so, so let's talk about the component of water potential for your level. I've taken out the gravity and other things. Okay, so water potential, you, it's got the two components of it, pressure potential and also the solid potential. Okay, this solid potential you have actually seen during your lab last week. What is the name of this equation? It's got a name for this equation. What is it? And I've already mentioned it. Uh, during the class. I think it's in your lab manual as well, I think. What is it? It start with V, it start, then it go H. What is it? Tak pay attention. Padahal aku cuma cakap tak sampai seminggu. Van Hoft. Check your um, lab manual. Is it in there? It's in there. So this is the equation from the Van Hoft uh, law. Okay. So you got your I, ionization constant, the molar concentration, the pressure constant, and also the temperature in Kelvin. Okay. So. Um, I'm not going to do all the calculation here, but I've given the example here, which you are going to need this for your lab experiment, okay? <clears throat> so, so in this example here, you can see that to get the psi S, psi S is the solid potential for this system. So this is the formula, negative I times C times R times T. So, Minus 2. Why is it 2? It's because in this case, um, this is the constant for this ionization uh, system, okay? Because it's got two charge, sodium chloride. One is here, minus 1, one is here. So they, they use 2. And then it times with the molar concentration. So this is I, okay? minus i and then it times with 0 0.25 this thing this thing here so what is it exactly this is the molar concentration molar concentration of what of the sodium chloride solution in this which is c okay and then it times with r r is the pressure constant it is constant you don't have to memorize it is given so this is the pressure constant, okay, which is R. And then you times with temperature in Kelvin. Kelvin, you need to convert because Celsius cannot be used here. It needs to use Kelvin. So you need to have your Celsius plus 273, which is your T. And then you will get your bar. See, even, even it doesn't use the Omega Pascal. What's wrong with it? Can you convert it to, 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 to Omega Pascal? How? 
why suddenly it become bus? Why it doesn't become uh, Pascal? Because of it is pressure constant here, the R here. Okay, here. it use bar. So you need to find the R that or that from the beginning using Pascal, not bar, to make your life easier. If you don't use the constant that has the Pascal unit in it, you will get bars instead of Pascal. Okay, so be smart about it. You know your ending. So act accordingly from the beginning. Oh, it rhymes. Right? Okay. So more or less, this is the calculation. Very easy. Right? Okay. Uh, now let's see the psi solute and psi pressure. How, how they determine the water movement. So we've got two systems here. We've got the water and in YouTube, not YouTube that you watch your cat video. This YouTube. This is called YouTube as well. And also the cells um, in, 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 um, in the beaker. You see this thing in the middle here? This is what we call as uh, uh, permeable membrane. Permeable membrane. Pure water, always zero megapascal. This is the law. You need to remember this. And then you got your solution. Okay. So for this solution, one side has got um, uh, pressure to it. So this is giving value to your psi P. You see all the foreign materials in this water. So these are giving value to your psi S. Okay. So for this example here, the psi P always give positive. I mentioned this last week, right? Pressure always give positive psi to the system. So that is positive. One megapascal. Psi S, these little red dots here, are in fact impurities to the system. Whenever water dissolves these impurities, it will automatically go to the negative side of the megapascal. So that's why you get your negative here, minus 1 megapascal. During equilibrium moment, when the megapascal from the pressure potential cancelling out the solute potential, you will get no movement of water because this is the resulting water potential of the system. How do you know it's not moving? Because the height is the same. <laughs> 